Okay, I'm back. And today what I got done is I had to pull the well pump up out of the well. Uh, the other morning woke up and there was no water. So I came out here and what I did was I went into the control box here and I checked it out. And I'm going to show you a little later there how I tested it. I tested the capacitor and I tested the relay and they were all good. And then I did continuity tests through here. And there's three main leads that go down to this well pump. And what they are is uh, there's a red wire and there's a yellow, yellow wire and a black wire. And I, I didn't have any continuity between the yellow, which is the common, and the black wire, which is the run winding in the motor. The other one is the start winding. The red and the yellow is the start winding. So I had no continuity between yellow and black. So I figured, okay, I have an open in the motor. So I pulled it up. And when I tested the motor, the motor was good. So I tested the cable. And there's uh, an open in the cable, in the black line, where probably where it's spliced. So anyway, what I did was I happened to have a new cable. So I rigged up a new cable onto the pump. Uh, there was a bunch of corrosion happening on it here. This pump's probably, well, it's been down the well about eight years and it was a used pump when I put it in about eight years ago. So I don't know quite the age of it, but it's probably a dozen years old anyway, but there was some corrosion starting up in here. So I put some JB Weld on it and it's uh, been hardening since yesterday. I got an anti-torque thing on it here. Uh, and what I did was the the piping that was in here uh, was PVC and it was PVC hard lengths of PVC going down in the well but uh, I dug up this piece of uh, polyethylene pipe it's one inch polyethylene and it you know it comes in a coil and it's uh, it's used for this purpose as well and it'll be a lot easier to put it in the well instead of having to put rigid lengths up and down in here so I've got it all rigged up got the new cable spliced in here got it heat shrunk all the cables are I put heat shrink in there, uh, got it all joined up here, I've got it running outside here. This is only a, it's not a very deep well, it's only a 37 foot deep well. And I got it measured up here, so I've got the, the this is the, this will be the top of it here, this is the what blocks the top of the well, here's your cable coming up here, here's your safety rope. So basically I got it all cinched together here with zip ties. Uh, so how it's going to be is the top of that pump is going to sit 31 feet below the surface of the well here. And that'll put it, uh, like the depth of the pump is almost 3 feet. So that's, what's that work out to? 34, so it'll be 3, 4 feet off, or about 4 feet off the bottom of the well once I get it uh, in place there. So we'll get that drop down in there in a minute. And then all i got to do is hook up the cables to the control box. And we should have water again. We've been a couple days without water, so... Yeah, so that should be pretty good. The JB Weld hardened up. Yeah, there's a bit of corrosion going on all along there. And I did, was I cleaned it all up too. I took this screen off. I cleaned all the rusty old deposits off in there. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get that lowered down in there. Open up the cover. All right. Undo this rope up here. Uh, let's just see what we end up with here. Okay. There we go. Okay, I got the pump dropped in. I got this piece of polyethylene pipe sticking up about six inches and I made my connection to it here. I've got all the tension for everything that's down in the well on this rope. I tied a knot here. So basically I took all the weight off of here and off the cable. I tied a knot so below that knot is the weight of the pump. So there's probably about you know six inches or a foot of slack in this cable so that the tension's not on the cable. All right so I brought the cable up in this protective sleeve and I hooked it here to the control box and basically I hooked it up black, yellow and red from the pump. There's no uh, ground wire on this old pump here so the ground wire just sits in here and I got line one and line two right here from the breaker over here 
and it's uh, 240 volts, right? So it's uh, line one is 120, line two is 120, 240 volts. Okay, I got everything glued together here. Now what I'm doing is I uh, I've emptied out any remaining water in the tank. I uh, isolated the tank here at the discharge, isolated the drain, and now I'm putting air, a pre-charge in the tank. I'm supposed to put 30 PSI in this tank. I'm uh, just waiting for my assistant to get a... Oh, here it is. Tire pressure gauge. Let's see. Let's see here. Looks like 35 PSI in there already. Okay, I'm back. And what I'm going to show you today is uh, how to test one of these pump control boxes. Okay, and what's inside of there and how to do all that. So just give me a second here. What we're going to do first thing is we're going here to the panel. Uh, in this case, the, this panel happens to be in the pump house, but you might have to look in your basement or wherever your, your, your service panel is. And turn off the power for the well pump. In this instance, this is a 240 volts going down to this system. You want to make sure you get that off, okay? Now what you do is there's a retaining screw on here. Take that out. Pull it out a little bit like that at the bottom. And what happens is your contacts are in here. So basically in these, in these boxes, you get your power coming from the panel here, line one, line two. So that'll be 120 volts on this one, 120 volts on that one, 240 volts overall. And then you have the connections for the pump. So there's three wires on this pump. Uh, there's no ground on this older pump. So the ground wire that we have in the, in the bundle just comes up and sits inside the panel here. Uh, you've got uh, yellow is the common and black is the run winding in the motor down in the well pump. And red is the uh, start winding. Okay. So what I had a problem with here earlier, uh, as I described a minute ago, so what I had was I had no continuity between uh, common and the run winding. Okay, and that ended up being the cable. I thought it was the winding in the motor, but it ended up being the cable, luckily. So we, we got to reuse the motor. So let me show you how to test all the rest of the stuff that's in this box here. See, when you, when you pull this apart, you see these contacts all along here. So they plug in here and they, they basically, they create a circuit through this, this cover. Let me show you what's in here and how to test it. Okay, uh, this is the capacitor. This is the start capacitor, run capacitor for the motor. And this is a relay, okay? So what you're gonna wanna do before you, you do anything with this, the capacitors uh, hold a charge. So you wanna dissipate that charge before you work on anything here. So the way to do that is just take a screwdriver cross it see that see that spark there that just uh, runs the charge between the two and it dissipates any charge left in the capacitor uh, they hold quite a bit of a charge enough to give you quite a shock so make sure you dissipate the charge in there before you do any tests on it okay once we got the charge dissipated in the capacitor we can take the screw out here take that little clamp off and we can take the capacitor out okay and just give me a second here, I'll just connect these two terminals on here. Okay, so to test the capacitance in this capacitor, we're going to look at it. We're going to identify that it needs to be between 59 and 71 microfarads. The UF symbol indicates microfarads. It's uh, the uh, unit for capacitance. And we know that we've got the right voltage here. It's 220 volts AC. Okay, if you were going to replace this, you would want to find one with the identical microfarads and you have to have at least 220 volts AC, which means it's the built for a certain uh, voltage inside of it. So it could be a higher voltage, but you, you can't deviate from the microfarads that it's rated for in 59 to 71. Okay, so let's um, get a little uh, capacitance meter here. Uh, you can use just a, a regular multimeter with a capacitance setting, but I happen to have this little new Nucason uh, XC6013L, which is uh, all it does is test capacitance, okay? So what we're going to do is we're just going to set the scale above what we know we're looking for. So we're going to set it at the 200 micro uh, farad uh, readings, the scale. We set it at 200. And we're just going to go between these leads here and there. And we're reading 60.1 microfarads. 
So 60.1 is within range, 59 to 71. So we know we're in range, so that's a good capacitor. Okay, so that tests out. So that wasn't our problem. Okay, we'll set that aside for now. Okay, so also inside the, this cover, we've got a relay, and we gotta make sure the relay is good, because it could be that that could be the problem not passing power to the motor. So to test this relay, there's a couple of different readings you're gonna get. You're gonna get a, a reading between here and here, and a reading between here and here, okay? So what we do is we set up our multimeter. We're gonna set it up to continuity. Okay, we just want the continuity setting right there. Now, what you're gonna want is between this terminal and this terminal, you wanna see no change at all. Okay, so it's reading OL on there. So we're gonna get those leads in there. We've got those touching on both. And we've got no change. Okay, that's good. All right. Now, between this terminal and this terminal, you're going to want to see zero. Okay, let's see what we got. Between here and there. And it's gone. It's moved from that to zero. So I'm going to take the leads off. We have OL. I'm going to put the leads on. It goes to zero. Okay. All right, so that, that relay is good. So that's all the components that are in the cover. You have a relay, you have your contacts that, that uh, join all those leads together once the cover's installed, and you have your capacitor, and we've tested that and that works. So we know that all these components are good. So that's the first thing I did when I came out here the other morning, was first I made sure that the power was on, that the breaker hadn't tripped. And I took this off and I tested the capacitor and I tested the relay. So I knew that the problem was somewhere downstream of the box. It was either in the, the pump itself or as it turned out it was in the cabling uh, leading from the control box down to the motor. Okay so it's been about four days since I uh, put the pump down in here and everything's been working perfectly. Uh, the water was a bit muddy and cloudy for a day or so. That's since cleaned up. Because just, you know, from the all the disturbance from the, the pump going down in, into the well. And we were, we plumbed the well right to the bottom, you know. So I had a, a weight on a string down in there and it stirred up all the sediment. So, that you know, you can expect mud and rusty colored water for a day or two after you've done any well work. Okay, so it's holding really good. And i have showing you how to test this uh, control box. Now, that said, there's a couple of different uh, types of pumps you can get. Uh, you get pumps that, that are uh, the superior quality pumps have the controls on the surface here and the inferior quality pumps you know you'll see these ones that say no control box needed it's all inside of the pump well those are usually a cheaper pump because what happens is if anything fails if the relay fails or if the capacitor fails it's all built inside the pump down in the well it's almost a throwaway so you know if one of these components fail in one of those cheaper pumps you can't just change it here on the surface, you've got to change the whole pump. And that's why you see that they're made cheaper and uh, you'd think they're made you know, more expensively because they have all those components down inside them, but it's not quite like that. It's This is a better quality pump. So if you're gonna put in a pump, uh, it's always best to put the one that has the surface control on it because if something like say just the capacitor goes, you can test it and change it. Or if the relay you know, goes, you can test that and change it. Otherwise you're gonna, you know, uh, Get a cheaper pump down in there, and if it fails in any way, you usually have to just throw it out. Yeah, just uh, these meters I've got are not expensive meters. This was probably a $25 meter, a multimeter, different functions on here. This one is specific for capacitors, and uh, I just thought I'd like to have it for because I test some uh, computer capacitors and things like that, small electronics capacitors. So I just got this, and it wasn't much. It was on Amazon. I think it was $25, maybe, maybe not even that. Kind of handy to have. Okay, so I'm gonna put this capacitor back in here. The other thing I noticed when I tested this capacitor, it is starting to show a little bit of sign of age. You see right in there, a little bit of fluid is, has leaked out of the capacitor. So that is an early indicator that it's gonna fail at some point. So I've ordered a new one. I'm gonna have a new one on hand. 
And I'm just going to run this one until it fails, and then I'll put a new one in. But you can see if you look at any type of bulging on the surface here, or if it's leaking in any way, it should be changed. So that's just uh, something else to note. You can see a little bit of uh, fluid had leaked out there. But it's not bulged here yet, and it's still uh, testing within specs, so uh, I'm going to use it again. Okay, uh, hopefully that helps somebody. Good luck out there changing your own pump and uh, doing your well work. Just make sure, you know, uh, simple safety. Make sure the power's off before you go in and, and touch anything in there. And uh, you should be okay. Okay, so to put that back together, just uh, sit the capacitor in here, put this little clamp on here, tighten the screw down a bit, snug it in there. Okay. And I got the leads hooked back up to the capacitor. The leads on the relay are okay. Okay, I'm just inspecting these pins here. These are the ones that connect to the box. Okay, so when you got that checked over, just bring it up here. And usually how that works is you just put the top in first. Put the top of the box over like that. Make sure you get the sides of the cover under the, uh, the sides of the box under the cover so they don't stick out. And then when you get it lined up, just give it a firm push like that. And then put the screw back in here and then turn the power on and you're back in business. And that's how that's done. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all my new subscribers. Make a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give us a thumbs up. Share this video with your friends. And we'll see you again soon. Bye now.